Nerd. Good morning, everybody. Walter Allen at Shinobi School, and I want to walk you around. We'll talk to Shinobi here in a second. Who's right here? Shinobi, say morning. Morning. Good morning. So uh, we are at Shinobi School, and this is not for the faint of heart. Let's let's talk to Shinobi here. Good morning. How are you? Good. Yeah. Good. So uh, where are we? It looks like we're in Cirque du Soleil, <laughs> Las Vegas, somewhere. So this is Shinobi School. We're in Tampa, Florida. We offer parkour, aerials, and American Ninja Warrior training. Uh, basically, we encourage functional body movement. So what is um, what is parkour? So we'll talk about all the different topics. But look at all. Um, so it's like park aerials. You have like the all this going on here. So the aerials. But then you have like part a ninja American Ninja Warrior. It's all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, Shinobi School actually started in my backyard in March of last year. Between March and September, we'd grown to the point where we were able to get a 10,000 square foot facility. Um, our job is to just help people with functional body movement and learn to kind of take back their bodies. Okay, so what was the need for this? The need for this was, uh, I'd done American Ninja Warrior, I competed season four, five, and six. I actually just recently finished competing on uh, Netflix for Ultimate Beastmaster. Um, and the need for this was there wasn't a place like this to train. There just wasn't. Uh, if you wanted to do uh, parkour, you needed to drive out to Odessa. If you wanted to do uh, Ninja Warrior training, you need to drive out to Palmetto. If you want to do aerials, you got to do St. Pete, Clearwater, Orlando. We're the only place in Tampa that offers all of this type of training. Now, functional body movement, now what, can you define that? What, what is? I can give you a great example right now. If you see a little pathway, so for instance, most people look at those rings over there and say you can't actually uh, jump to those rings. What I can do is I can uh, use my trapeze techniques to swing on over to it. So ready? All right, see it. Look at that. It just makes, means I'm very aware of what my body's doing. I know my limits. K N O W. So I'm aware of how high I can jump, what I can climb, what I can get over. Um, parkour teaches you to develop your body to overcome obstacles, as well as teaches you how to overcome the obstacles in your environment. We got a great question here from Joe. Joe says, how does it compare to CrossFit or lifting weights? So I, actually, it's really, really funny. We had a CrossFit crew that was at the front of our school, and they look at me all the time and be like, you know, you don't look like you have any muscle. How are you doing any of this stuff that you're doing? So I make the joke, I will never be able to lift a car. <laughs> I don't need to. Yeah. I only need to worry about lifting myself. I have myself the rest of my life. So running, jumping, climbing, that's what I mean by functional body movement. Swinging, moving around the environment. We got kids who are able to get up things that are twice their size. Yeah, let's walk over there. Yeah. So as far as like a workout though, uh, I mean, are you going to burn as many calories? Is there even a way to measure how many calories you're going to burn? Cause you know, you go to Orange Theory, you know, it's like, oh, you burn like 700 calories. Or so, you know, the thing was, is, is I always wanted to be that guy who went to the gym and like lifted weights. Yeah. I mean, it, it might be discipline, but I just got bored. Like, I was never that dude who could just go out there and just bang out like, a whole bunch of reps and stuff. But this, I play, and at the end, I'm, I'm just tired from playing. One of the disciplines that you teach here is parkour. P-A-R-K-O-U-R. What is parkour? Parkour, what I like to tell people, is learning how to overcome obstacles in your environment and developing your body to overcome obstacles in your environment. So parkour is actually developed by a firefighter who wanted to be more effective at saving people. So it incorporates a lot of functional body movements, 10 uh, body movements based on the natural method. Um, basically what he did is he eventually taught his son David Bell, who's a gymnast, mm -hmm. who brought parkour to a lot of the, the, the spotlight that we see today. Now, there's a difference between parkour and free running. Free running is what you see in the movies where people are jumping building to building and they're doing flips and all the craziness and whatnot. We don't teach that here. We teach parkour. Once you have a good foundation in parkour and how to navigate your environment, what you do with it from there on, it makes the world your playground. And that's where you kind of start going into the free running aspect. Now, what are some of the techniques to be able to do that safely? I mean, because I mean, you're jumping from, like, you know, she, she just ran up that, that big wall. <laughs> I mean, how do you do that safely? I mean, well, the first thing they learn is a proper landing. For instance, when I do my proper landing, I'm going to land the balls of my feet and split out as much of that uh, energy as I can. I kind of like to use like video game analogies. Everything we do here is very nerd-centric and geek-centric and whatnot. So video game analogy. If I go and I fall off this giant thing and I fall on my head and it's, I'm going to make up numbers, but it's 100 points of damage, I don't want to take that on my head. But if I go and I split between my feet, that 100 becomes a 50-50. 
If I go and I split that again between the feet and the hands, it becomes 25, 25, 25, 25, right? Well, I bet you didn't know you can do math this one. <laughs> so right. in saying that, the number isn't getting smaller. It's still 100, but the overall body parts can handle it because it's spreading it out. So simple little things like that. People don't realize that they've been doing parkour their whole life. I mean, when you were a little kid and you were running and climbing coffee tables and, and all that stuff, right? But with a lot of these techniques, what you've already been doing, you can learn to do more efficiently and more importantly, safer. Yeah, that's crazy. And, and you're right, we have been doing parkour our entire life. When we're climbing trees and yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> So I'm seeing what, what is your what is your median age here? Uh, our, our youngest is four. Our oldest is 68. Okay. Um, so it, it really is all right. 68? Yeah. Yeah. Where's that person today? Not here. I <laughs> it's talk, I it's early. I'm barely here. It's like six in the morning. I want to talk, I want to talk with him or her. <laughs> um, so and, and the big thing to think about is um, we get people all the time who are like, you know, I can't do it because I need to get more in shape or I need to lose weight or I need to whatever. No, 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 no. Stop the excuses. Come do parkour, come train with us. You'll still reach the goals that you're looking for. Don't try and hit your goals to go and do this to reach your goals, right? It is, that's so backwards, that make any sense. So your youngest is four years old. Yes. Uh, My daughter's actually been doing it with me since she was two. I mean, what did they get out of it? Why, why are they here? And then what's the change that you've seen? So we'll start, we'll start with the, why, why are they here first? Confidence. Uh, b being able to know your body. Mm -hmm. So if you think of us, you know, people, you, you, you want to be a, a complete human being. I shouldn't look at something and say, you know, I can't climb up that. I can't move around that. I, I can't jump over this, right? What happens when, yeah, and we've all seen the, the horror movies, that one dude's being chased by the, the crazy killer and they can't get up the wall or they get stuck. Don't be that person, right? You should be able to know your own body. And know that, especially in this environment, if I need to get away from something that I'm in danger of, I can do it. I understand my limits. I understand my body. And when they leave here, uh, you mentioned confidence. I'm sure it's through the roof. Yes, yeah. Um, so actually, it's really funny. We're, we're part of um, a group, American Parkour. Um, and they just recently did a study on parkour and, and how it correlates to distance in the brain mm -hmm. and people who are more proficient more confident they actually see objects at the same distance closer so you and i might both stand on something and you might be like man that's a really really big jump and i'll be like oh that's, that's not so bad i've done that one before right so i even though it's the same distance to us that confidence i actually perceive it as closer i understand what my body can do uh, Alicia and Charmaine, good morning to you guys. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, you want to come check out the aerials? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So aerials is, is part of what you offer here. Yeah, it's kind of like we see in Cirque du Soleil. It's, it's another thing, and you know, I make the joke all the time. It's like hard, like I do all this parkour stuff, yeah. but it's like they're using their core and their upper body and they're so strong. And again, you know, we talk about that functional body movement. They're learning just how to hold their own body up off of the ground for extended periods of time. Um, our aerials class are actually taught by Ann Tully over here. She was featured in American Ninja Warrior season six. Oh wow. Yeah, she also has a master's in scenic design and construction. So she builds a lot of the stuff that we, you see at the school behind us. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So part of uh, what is taught here, I mean, how much schooling and how much training goes in before you can let people you know, start climbing this stuff safely? People will be on it day one. Really? Day one, yep. Yeah. Um, important thing is, again, like learning, for instance, in parkour, how to land safely, yeah. how to climb something safely. I don't say, okay, good luck, Johnny. Ho ho hope you make it. You'll be just fine, right? Yeah. No, but um, I mean, for instance, like with this, everyone's got different goals, different body types too. That's super important. Um, we've had people who have spent upwards of a month plus trying to learn just to get on one of these hoops. But with consistent training, just like anything else, you'll reach your goal. The same thing with parkour. They'll come in and they'll be like, you know, Shinobi, I just don't know how to do those jumps that you do. Consistent training. This isn't like, I mean, like when you go to the gym, you're not going to hit your max load day one, uh -huh. right? You're building up to whatever your goal is. It's the same thing with your jumps. The joke I kind of make like with the kids is you're your own video game character. To level up, you have to train yeah. to reach those goals. So you start going around the school and you're like, man, I'm so close to beating that unstable bridge. I'm so close to getting up that warp wall. And with consistent training, you will reach those goals. But those people who come one or two days and they're like, you know, it is hard. 
they're not gonna see the same results. And just like the video game, uh, you know, you don't get to level two, three, four first time out. You gotta, you gotta. But they, practice, they, you gotta they, they, start, they start fighting like ducks at the beginning, right? It's like yeah, something yeah, like yeah. so. Like there's like a crab or something, and then at the end you get that final boss, right? But it's the same exact thing. You check out the warp ball. Let's check it out. So we have three different walls. Our first one is eight feet. It's got different sides. It's got a flat side, which is more challenging. It's got an uh, angled side, which is kind of like uh, the next level below that. Um, and then you can actually use the 11 foot wall on this side over here to get up the eight foot Once you get past that, then we've got the 11 foot vert wall. We call it a vert wall instead of a warp wall because it doesn't have that lip at the top. Okay. If you come check out the warp wall from American Ninja Warrior, that does have that lip. And you can see it's 14.2 feet tall. So people all the time are like, not that tall. Uh, I'm five foot six. Uh, so take that into perspective. You can actually, like, if you step back, you can see how big it is compared to me. It goes all the way up. And you've seen the people on the show that, that don't make it. I mean, Correct. that's, yeah. You know, and, you know, and that gives such a good example, too. Like, we have people who are like six foot plus who come in here and they're like, oh, I can totally do that. And they go and they run into the wall. Yeah. Now, some people are in better shape. Some people know their bodies better, which is super important. Mm -hmm. But it really gives a lot of credibility to the fact that, like, a little five foot six dude can get up a 14.2 foot wall and a six, seven foot guy can't. Why is that? Right? Training? Training. Training. Confidence. Yes. Understanding your body. Knowing, for instance, if I keep my chest forward, I'm going to run into this wall. So kind of like Sonic the Hedgehog, I keep my chest back a little bit so my knees can pull through. Yeah. i got to build extra momentum with my arms, swing through. Take as much advantage of, of your different body parts as possible. Your arms are only so strong. If you combine that with your legs and your core and your chest and stuff, multiple muscle groups are always stronger than one muscle group. You going to show us how it's done? Yeah, let's do it. Can I stand right here or am I going to be in the way? Uh, you probably get a better shot over here. Okay. Just follow me on it. All right, here we go, folks. Well, how tall is this wall again? 14.2, and actually the show just raised theirs to 14.6 because somebody uh, beat it last year. So we're actually planning on raising one side of it to 14.6 and the other side to 15. Okay. <laughs> oh, so you're going to keep growing, huh? Yeah, I got to keep up. Does this give kids, I mean, it gives kids confidence, but is this um, arming them with a, a way to get in trouble a little bit more? A way to get Climbing in trouble. trees and... <laughs> so uh, what, what I like to tell people is, for instance, just like any other sport, any other technique, or whatever it is you're doing, it, it typically depends on not just the, the person, but the training. I mean, think about martial arts. The whole idea behind it is it's for self-defense. For this over here, the idea behind it is you unlocking your body, yeah. confidence, right? We're not encouraging people to say, hey, go on down to your local theme park and start busting out flips and stuff like that. But it does allow me that if, for instance, I am falling, I know how to fall safely. If I need to uh, get to a better environment because I feel unsafe, I know how to navigate that environment. That makes sense? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. So, um... How does your hair stand that far? That, that, that a lot of product. A lot of product. <laughs> a lot of it product. makes me aerodynamic. I, like, I can't actually land my flips without it. Yeah, like, I was going to say. <laughs> it gives you the Sonic the Hedgehog vibe, too, right? So, uh, you folks. If you, uh, if you were watching, how long ago was the, the Lowry Park Zoo thing? Lowry Park Zoo is probably two, three months ago. Three months ago? Okay, so if, if you folks at home, if you remember. Uh, Charlie Belcher was at the Lowry Park Zoo, and they had the tumble monkeys. Do you remember the tumble monkeys? And then Jen was enamored by the tumble monkeys. Uh, they, we have a tumble monkey here. There she is. She's upside down. We'll try to talk to her as she's hanging. Don't, don't <laughs> fall on me, please. I promise. Okay, so uh, you're a tumble monkey. What's your name? Aaron. Aaron. Uh, how did that even even come about? Well, uh, Shinobi has known. 
Scott Swenson for years. Um, Scott Swenson used to run Hollow Scream for Bush Gardens, but now he generally just does private contracting. Mm -hmm. um, and Lori Park had him in charge of the entertainment for their sunset celebration. And so Scott Swenson went to Shinobi and said, hey, they need entertainment, can you provide it? And he said, well, of course. Um, so he, a bunch of us sent in audition videos and he picked the people that he felt would represent the school the best. And there were, I think four of us total. Um, and we had, maybe there were five of us. And we had three people on each night. Um, so we got to trade out so we weren't doing every night. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just, we had fun with the kids. We got to represent the school. We got to show off some tumbling stuff a little bit. That's cool. So would you say that that would have been an opportunity if you hadn't been here? Yeah, we only um, offered that to students. Mm -hmm. So you did have to be a student here in order to get a gig like that. So it's nice because if you're training here, you know, you, you get to learn all this fun stuff and it's good for you and it's a nice hobby, but then you also see that like, yes, you can get paid for it. Yeah. Um, and we don't necessarily teach tumbling in our public classes. We do offer things like that through private sessions. Um, but it's, we definitely get plenty of like free runners and gymnasts in our open gyms and things. And we do have people that take private sessions to learn how to flip and such so that they can go to these events. Because we've got so many students that want to do entertainment for their, their jobs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So where do you go from here? I mean, is this, is this something you want to do as a career? And... There are careers available. Like um, most people know of Cirque du Soleil. Mm -hmm. Um, there's other groups. Um, I know of a group called Aerial Angels that travels throughout different countries in Europe just street performing because street performing is huge in Europe so they have a portable rig like we take to traveling shows ourselves um, and they set up their portable rig on the streets in Europe and make their living that way. That's cool. So there are opportunities available and we know like um, Vault of Souls I think wanted an aerialist for their show. So there are various ways to do performance for a living. Can we get a tumble monkey face? There it is. <laughs> can't forget that face. Can't forget the tumble monkey face. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. So yeah, and you know what's cool about that too is we offer traveling entertainment and stuff. Mm -hmm. So whether it's bringing an obstacle course or a traveling performance, for instance, uh, September 23rd and 24th, we're going to be at the Tampa Convention Center for Fit and Flex Expo. We're actually going to be bringing a huge American Ninja Warrior experience. It looks a little different than when you see all this out here. Like, whereas right now everything's all very compact, just like the show, we're going to be setting up a huge, long, actual obstacle course with a lot of the obstacles you see from the show on there. So are people going to be able to participate? And... Yes. Okay. Anybody can come in and try their best uh, and feel what it's like to compete on American Ninja Warrior. Well, that's awesome. So very, well, that's, very cool. That's great for you guys, too, because you get a, uh, some exposure there. Yeah, yeah, they're a lot of fun. So outside of that, that one's an obstacle course-based one. We also do traveling stunt and aerial-type performances. Mm -hmm. So again, we pack up like the whole school in the back of a giant truck. We bring it out. We perform at the Tampa Convention Center uh, three or four times this year. Um, so and, uh, and our program director over here, she handles all of that stuff and writes a lot of our shows. Um, most of our shows are always nerd, pop culture, video game type themes. So our recent one was actually Borderlands. Had live stunts. We were, brought all the stuff out here. You see people doing flips off boxes and uh, in the air doing all the silks and, and awesome performances. And, but what's cool about that is we only use our own students. So everyone you're seeing in the show is a real person. It's not somebody who's been doing aerials for 42 plus years and, yeah. and they travel. It's, it's somebody who's typically been practicing less than a year. Wow. So you're seeing real people in their progress, and it's cool because when you watch the shows, the people only get better. That's awesome. Because they're training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, where do you guys go from here? What, uh, what, what's, what's the uh, end goal? Just keep getting better? Or? Well, the thing is we build one new obstacle or piece of equipment every single week. Wow. So definitely trying to keep up with the demand of the show. Um, every year the show increases in uh, submission videos by anywhere from 15 to 20,000 people. So last year was 55,000 people applied for American Ninja Warrior. This year is 70,000 plus. Yeah. So people are interested in that. People, whether they want to learn to compete on the show or train like the people who compete on the show, we now offer that opportunity. I'm going to have to cut you off right there. Don't go anywhere. i got to do a tease real quick, okay? Okay. All right, so you folks are... i got to do a tease real quick. And I'm going to prop up this camera as I do that. Hopefully that'll stay. Hopefully that'll stay. Can you, can you do the sitting in here? Yeah. Okay. Um,
starting to push on the side. I'm going to grab my coffee. We're going to focus on the tease. Oh, okay. He's mic. He's the mic. Yep, yep, yep. The craziness of going live. Okay, so we just did a tease. Good morning, Gail, how are you? Just did a tease. And now we're going to do, let me like some of these uh, comments there. And then we're gonna do our live interview. Let me see if I can strategically place this. Um... I don't think this is working very well. I'll put it back to where it was. So we'll keep our interview going at the other side of this, of this interview. Don't go anywhere. Uh, hey Brad, are, you, are we gonna have the Charlie open, or is it coming straight out to me, or are they tossing? Oh, okay. But just,
Thank you for staying with us. My goodness. So we just did our uh, we just did our live hit on Fox 13. So now we have about 30 minutes, and let's talk with the sweatiest person in the room. <laughs> Who's the sweatiest? You look pretty sweaty over here. Are you sweatiest? Yes. You sweaty? All right. What's your name? Micah. Micah. Uh, what, what have you been doing today? Running around, free running, parkour. Parkour. Yes. How did you heard about? How did you hear about this? Um. I watched a lot of videos and stuff and got very interested, so I searched up on the internet and found Shinobi. So then I came here the next day and uh, learned. Well, two questions, but first, what did your parents say when you <laughs> said you wanted to come here and try parkour? Um, they thought it was a little crazy, but they were okay with it and they brought me here and I had a fun time. What's their reaction now after they've seen you doing it for a while? They're okay with it. They really like it. They really They're like interested, it. yeah. Have you noticed a change in yourself at all? Uh, yes, I've what gotten is that a lot change? stronger, and um, I've learned a lot of things. Uh -huh. So, 
How about confidence? Yes. You're very confident yes. now? Yes, no. Does, it, does the whole world seem smaller to you? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah, so you can jump on stuff and it mm -hmm. doesn't seem as scary, right? Yes. Okay, so kids your age, mm -hmm. baseball, football, they're playing all these different sports. Here you are, you're jumping and climbing up things. Mm -hmm. What's their reaction when you tell them what you're doing? Nothing. They, they, everyone, most everyone knows it, so they okay. just, you know, whatever. Okay. And uh, I'm sure you'd have an open bed. You, you, you could play their sport, but yes, see if they come yes, and, and try this. Yeah, they'd probably mess up. They'd need to get taught by um, Janobi. Yeah. Okay, so you would uh, definitely recommend it to your, to your friends and stuff, huh? Yes. Okay. You can be on an American Ninja Warrior one of these days? Maybe. Maybe? Yes. Awesome. Well, best of luck. Hopefully, we'll see you on there, okay? Thank you. All right, Micah. You're sweaty, too, so we'll come and talk to you guys. What's your name? Um, my name is David Delapaz. Hi, David. How are you? I'm very good. What have you been doing? Um, I've been doing some parkour since uh, we are in Shinobi's backyard, so <laughs> it's come a long way. So, why did you try this instead of you know the normal soccer, baseball, um, football? Because I just wanted to kind of do something different. Mm -hmm. I just want because you know, don't climb on the couch. We or don't climb on the countertops. I wanted to be able to do some climbing over stuff and not get yelled at. So, <laughs> so yeah. So now you're doing that. What, what was your parents' reaction when you said? Uh... Um, they said I could come as long as she could wrap me up in bubble wrap. <laughs> well, you're not in bubble wrap, so obviously yeah. you proved to your parents that yeah. it's, it's somewhat safer yes. than what they thought. Yes, definitely, but um, it's all a skill. I mean, you can't just come here and then randomly do front flips. You have to learn. It's progressive, mm -hmm. and it's just a big training progress. Did and it's you, very fun. Do your friends know what this is? Um, They do, and uh, I actually had a birthday party here, so all my friends came, and we had a big... Fun time. It was really fun. Oh, that's cool. So, so they do birthday parties here. They do do. Okay. Uh, how big was a birthday party? Um, it's pretty big. Pretty big, so they can hold a lot then. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. We have games, obstacle courses, cake. <laughs> so you probably have zero energy when you come home after this place. Um, pretty much. <laughs> so your parents are happy then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, are you gonna do American Ninja Warrior, or is this just... Definitely. Are you? Yes. Good for you. Well, we hope to see you on there. Best of luck, okay? Thank you. All right. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. Oh, well, you can stay up there if you want. Let's see. Now I gotta... See, all right, I gotta climb the obstacles here. Not as gracefully as everybody else was. Okay, what's your name? I'm Ava, and I've been doing this for a year and a half now. Uh, what's what drew you into it? Um, my friend told me about it, and I was like, "That sounds really cool." So I decided to come and try it out, and I've just been doing it ever since. I saw you like you know flipping and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, how long did it take you to learn that? Not that long. I was just I've had a natural thing for like hanging upside down and stuff, so I've gotten used to it. And what do you want to go from here? Is there like a career that you want to do, or do you want to do American Ninja Warrior? Or? I want to see if I can get on American Ninja Warrior. Nice. Well, good for you. What were your parents' reactions when you uh, said you were to My dad was like, oh, cool. And then I was like, are you sure it's safe? <laughs> but now you've been doing How long have you been doing it? A year and a half. A year and a half, okay. Uh, well, good for you. So now you can't. I, I like your pants. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Okay. Look at it. I, everybody just kind of hangs around. I love it. Everyone, people are just in random spots. <laughs> So I have to ask you, the actor in X-Men, the frog guy, what's his name, Toad? Uh, he's, one, he's one of these Ray guys. Park. He actually has a wushu background. But okay. actually, in the uh, the new movie, uh, Nightcrawler was Jesse LaFlair, well, one of the, the stunt people. And actually, one of my first uh, parkour instructors was a stunt double for the new Spider-Man, Marvin Ross. Oh, so, cool. Shout outs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, very cool. And then, who is this? And she does, she does the uh, aerial stuff. Yeah, so this is uh, Anne. She was actually featured in American Enjoyer Season 6. Uh, she is our aerialist instructor. She also has a master's in scenic design and construction, so she does way cooler manly stuff than I'll ever do. She builds a lot of the obstacles that we see around here and then also can perform on them as well. She's also the program director and runs all of our shows. Oh, wow. So, Anne, you have a big responsibility. Yeah, not as big as him though, so I can't complain. <laughs> yeah. So when you're instructing um, everybody on the aerial, I mean, what's, what goes into that? Uh, so the biggest thing we have is safety. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that people are coming out here 
you watch YouTube videos, you go see Cirque du Soleil, you say, that looks really cool, I want to do it. Well, we want to make sure that there's a safe environment for you to train in. There is a lot of making sure people have the proper technique, mm -hmm. understand why their body functions the way it does, why when you do an elbow hang it hurts so bad, <laughs> and how to prevent it from hurting in the future, and just making sure that people can reach their full potential. We want to make sure that people have the tools they need to do anything they want to do. Now, this goes to both of you, and I'll, I'll go over here. Um, when you look at this stuff, American Ninja Warrior or Cirque du Soleil, that sort of thing, uh, can I camera like this let me find hey there we go so when you see that stuff it seems so far away like unattainable and I, I guess you are hopefully trying to change that right yeah well I mean typically that comes down to training uh, people who tell me that they don't feel good about a competition or they don't feel good about a performance it most often than not comes back to the person and the amount of time they're putting in the training. Mm -hmm. When you get somebody like uh, Ann and Aaron and Melina and all these people who are training like two, three times a week, uh, they are at a different level than somebody who maybe comes like once a month. And that's very, very evident, especially with the shows. So when somebody looks at me and they're like, you know, I just don't know if I can do that performance in the Lyra, it comes back to the training. Let's get you in classes. Let's build that confidence up and help you, you know, realize your full potential. Yeah, we want to give people what they need to do whatever they want to do. Regardless of your body type, your gender, no matter what your background is, if you want to do something, you should have the ability to do it. And if you have the drive, the dedication, and the ambition, we want to get you there. What is the biggest highlight for you personally when you see one of your students succeed, go on to be a tumble monkey or whatever, even beyond? Uh, that probably actually you kind of summed it up. That's the best thing for me is, you know, Shinobi and I got into this because we enjoy doing this stuff and we wanted more people to share it with. So uh, at the end of the day, when I have someone who comes to me in their first day of class says, I can't climb the silks. And then after a couple months of training, they're touching the ceiling. It's just, it's the greatest achievement for me that we gave them a place where they can do that. Something that they never thought was possible, that the first day they came in here, they said, this is something I can't do, and we took it from I, I can't do it into I can do it. For me, uh, actually, this kid right over here, David, he's been training with me since we were in a backyard, so we didn't have the luxury of all these pads and walls and a roof. I remember the first time we did class, it was like seven o'clock at night, we were out in a field, I had two little modified Home Depot vaults and 26 people showed up and I was like, what is, you guys are making good choices, you don't even know who I am. It's nighttime, we didn't have like lights and stuff and well eventually those classes grew and we were able to offer kids classes. Um, people wanted to train in the backyard, now they want to train over here. This is where we started. With. This is actually yeah, this is the original, works. original thing. I don't know very much building stuff, but I went. So, I took a slab of wood, I put yeah. it on top. We screwed in something to make it a little bit more sturdy. Put more we put in a couple in braces in, and so said, this is what good. we started our classes with. So when David started, I remember when we had these quintuple steps. We just started building them. You can come on with me on okay. an adventure. Um, which, by the way, our quintuple steps are built at a 55 degree angle. The ones on the show are a 45 degree angle. So ours are a little bit more challenging, especially for training purposes. Okay. So these were pretty difficult to get through. Um, I remember, and I hope you don't mind me telling the story, but I remember um, he, he fall into the sides, he couldn't get up them, he couldn't get through them and whatnot. And seeing progress on something as simple as this shows me that this is real. It's, it's not rocket science. If you train consistently, your body will get better. Uh, I use an analogy, I think uh, Anna told me about it uh, a couple weeks ago. So the jumping spider was difficult for her when she first started. She just couldn't stick in between. And then one day she went through it and she's like, oh, I didn't even realize I just beat that thing. Like I've been, it, it's, just, it's, it's nonchalant. You're doing this so much that you kind of not necessarily like lose track of that original goal, but it just becomes like the norm. Like I'm, when I first started training, the warp wall was pretty daunting. Now it's like, oh, okay, I just I did the warp wall again yeah. in school. But some people are like, I just want to beat that warp wall. It's just different levels of training. So the idea is, you want to be so comfortable with everything. It's just it's normal. It's not you having to you know bust your body to go and do it one time. It's okay. I got up it. What's next? Okay, I got up that. What's next? Is it kind of getting out of your own head type of thing? There's a lot of that. Oh my god. Are goodness. we up on a thesis? Yeah, right yeah, there's a lot of that. Oh, what do you want for the, the kids? Oh, hold on one second. Here, we'll go over here. <laughs> Good 
Sorry to put you down. I thought I had a tease there. Uh, my last question before we let you go. Uh, let me switch around so you don't have to see my face. There we go. Uh, is it how much of our own head prevents us from doing stuff? We are very, I feel like we've become a very like fear driven society, fear based. Everything's no, stop, don't, can't, be careful, things like that. Um, very rarely are you going to hear me say no, stop, don't. If somebody's running around or, or whatnot and, it's, and I want them to, to stop running, I'm going to give them the command I want. So walk. It's the same thing with this. Even when people mess up, it's rarely am I going to go and say, well, you know, it, you really should have thrown that jump harder. You should have lifted your arms. Too. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the positives. Like, that was a great jump. Try and get your feet a little bit more in front of you. You'll be a little bit more effective with your cat hang if you do this. Like, I, I want to focus on the positives. We compliment, like even if somebody like bails, like for instance, okay, I'm gonna intentionally wipe out on this. Are you ready? This is gonna be great for, for your audience. Oh, okay, here we so, go. <laughs> so, for instance, with this thing over here, the first vault people learn is a safety vault, right? A beginner might not bring this foot completely through and it might get caught. So, for instance, I'm gonna wipe out, ready? If I go, whoa, I might compliment the roll. Does that make sense? Rather than somebody going and just completely wiping out and giving up, you might say, you know what? That was a great ball. Try and get your back foot a little bit higher. Good job on the roll. I like how you didn't just fall and take all the impact on your arm or your head or whatever. Yeah. Right? We want to build people back up. You're not going to get anything by just beating somebody down. <laughs> so I feel like our environment is very positive driven and focusing on what people can do and how they can grow. Okay. Well, Shinobi, thank you so much. And then where are you located real quick? Uh, Temple we Terrace. Are 11710 North 51st Street. So we are on Temple Terrace right off 51st Street. Giant 10,000 square foot facility. Close to uh, USF campus. Yeah, right, walking distance from USF. Actually, a bunch of our students are from USF. We're right next to CDB's Pizza and next door to Felicitas Ice Coffee. All right, there you go. Perfect. So there you go. You've, had it. You've heard it here, folks. Shinobi School. You, you've, you've officially terrified me, I think. <laughs> officially terrified me. So there you go, folks. Shinobi School. Hope you check them out. Uh, we're going to be live throughout the morning here on Fox 13. We've got a couple more hits. So I hope you join us. And uh, let's make it a good day, Tampa Bay.